Jordan Ma Maxwell, welcome back for the seventh and last part of the interview uh, that I call call the Zombies Awakening. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for having me on and for thinking of me. And thank you for being interested uh, because so many people don't seem to be very interested in knowledge and yes. wisdom and understanding. So I'm always happy to do a program with someone who is concerned and interested in knowledge and understanding. And, and so I thank you for that. And I thank you for having me on the show. Jordan Maxwell, the title for the last show tonight is Maxwell's Encounters. So I will propose you a more personal interview. I hope it's okay for you. Yeah. Okay. You are since many years now a radio host. Can you tell us the guests you received that impressed you the most and why? Uh, as a radio talk show host, yeah. what guests have really impressed me? And why, yeah. And why? Well, there's about, there's about four or five people that I, uh, I, maybe a half a dozen people that I consider to be extremely important in the times in which we're living. Uh, the first number one is... Um, uh, and it's hard to put number one because all all six of them are very important. But uh, I would say Joseph Farrell, a good friend of mine. I, Farrell, F-A-R-R-E-L-L, uh, is, is an extraordinarily bright and brilliant man. And I love listening to him talking about the world we live in. Very, very few people have captured the the situation as well as he has and done the kind of research he's done. Brilliant man. And second, I would put um, um, Peter Lavenda. Uh, Peter Lavenda is also uh, number one in my book, top of the line, fascinating man who has done the kind of research I love hearing about. He's done the kind of thing I'm interested in, and all the dark secrets of the world and how the world really works, and the government, religions, and secret societies, and political movements around the world, what the real story is, not what you thought it was. And so I'm fascinated by that subject all my life. And so Peter Lavenda is number two. Uh, number three is, um, uh, what's her name? A young lady, um, my goodness, I can't remember her name right now that I need to. Um, she deals with, well, I, her name will come to me in a few minutes. But uh, those are the top two, Peter Lavenda and Joseph Farrell, because of the kind of research they do, uh, because it's extremely important what they do. And most people uh, hearing them will not understand what they're talking about because it's so incredibly uh, brilliant stuff that you have to have a background in the world of dark knowledge and hidden knowledge to really get to understand what they're talking about because they are explaining the real world, the dark world that we really live in and how it really works. And so I'm very interested in uh, all of my life. I have been interested in the hidden wisdom all of the hidden stuff that people don't know and all of the information that nobody is supposed to know anything about i have pursued that kind of knowledge all of my life so that today uh, that occupies my entire life is occupied today 
by researching and studying all of the uh, called the occult truth. The word occult simply means hidden. Anything which is hidden is occult. And so occult doesn't mean devils and demons and, and, and bad stuff like that. Uh, it simply means hidden. And so, so much of reality of the world we live in is hidden from people, generally speaking. So that today, the people of this world have no idea in the world how the world works, how the earth actually works. They don't know how the heavens operate. They don't know how the solar system operates. They don't know how governments operate or banks, insurance companies, police department, education, military, the industrial military complex. People, generally speaking, don't know how any of this works. And therefore, because of that reason, we as human beings on the earth today are merely goy. We are merely cattle. We're just... We're just here. We do, we're here because we were born, and we will serve the government and serve the banks and serve the masters uh, of the earth uh, while we're here. And then when we leave, good, then we're gone, and a new crop will come in and continue to serve the masters. Because the, the people today are ignorant, ill-informed, unread, and are not interested in knowing wisdom and knowledge and spiritual depth and truth. And therefore, when they have children, they, they cannot help to educate their children that they're brain to. So the children grow up the best way they can with no knowledge, no understanding. And it gets so frustrating for people when they're growing up to have no knowledge, no leadership, no one to teach them what's going on and how to think. And so the, the young people turn to drugs and entertainment and alcohol and all kinds of fast cars and all kinds of stupid things that young people do. And I did it too when I was a kid. But the point being is that uh, without proper education, educating children how the world works, how to think, what not to do and why not to do it and, and what to do and how to do it. And, uh, and generally to educate the young mind that's growing up. Because today, we now have uh, 7 billion people on the earth. And uh, it's, it's very frightening to me. Because everywhere I go, when I've traveled around the world many times, and wherever I go, the people are the same everywhere. Nobody seems to know anything. You, you, no matter what religion they belong to, they don't know anything about it. They just were born into it. They were born Muslim, or they were born into Catholic, or they were born into uh, Jewish religion. They would just happen to be born into something, so that's what they are. And you ask, well, have you ever examined what you believe? No, we don't. No, it doesn't matter. We, uh, it's not important. It's not important. What's important is I need a job, I need, and I need to buy beer and, and and entertain myself and go to fast cars and and and, uh, and and watch television and go to the ball. Okay, do all the people do, and never realize for a moment why you are here why you were born, where you were going when you die, and what are you doing in life. Um, and so we, generally speaking, as humans, are just like the cattle out, on the, out in the prairie. We're just all out there, you know, uh, taking care of your young. That's what the animals do. The, the cows take care of their, their calves and, and the young ones, and they're all looking for something to eat and, and something to drink. And that's it. That's all their life is, is just doing what they normally do every day, never realizing that you are being fed and you have water to drink and being fed and given a place to live. Why? Because they're going to make hamburger out of you. 
they're going to be they're going to be slaughtering you and you're going to be going to McDonald's subway. <laughs> and so the reason why I'm saying all this is because that's what happens when you are ignorant, ill informed and unread and you don't know how things work. You're going to be harmed by the system, by the world system we are in. The smart always are in charge of the poor and the ignorant and the ill-informed. But there's no reason for people to be ill-informed anymore. If you can read, you got the web, you got the thousands of websites to read from. You've got libraries. There's no reason why people should be profoundly ignorant as they are today. So what I try and do is just wake people up and tell them the world is not what you think it is. You need to wake up and find out how this world really works. That's what I try and do. Laurent Maxwell, what do you have to say to people that say of you and your work, you know what, Jordan Maxwell is a nutty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many, so many people view my work and what I do as uh, ludicrous or stupid or uh, it doesn't have anything, nothing to do with reality. When in point of fact, my work is trying to explain to you reality, the world you live in and how it works. But there's only a handful of people, there's always been, all the way through history, there's always been just a small, select few people who want to know, who are highly intelligent and who are looking for answers, who are scientific in their thinking and want to know but today, uh, in the Western civilization, in the world of the West, we don't know how anything works. And that's why we have no control over anything. We don't have any control over government and over banking and over the laws that we live by. We don't have any control over anything. Why? Because knowledge is power. Without knowledge, and you don't know how the world really works, then you're never going to be able to know how to do anything. And you're just going to continue to get in trouble with the law. You're going to be breaking the law. You're going to be paying fines and paying tickets. And you're going to be uh, losing money. And some of you will be going to jail. And the others will be going broke. And because people don't know how this system that we live under actually, in fact, get in trouble. If you find out you have a disease or some terrible thing has happened to you, you need to go and have a, a, a very serious operation to save your life, then you will pay a doctor a lot of money. You're going to pay. Somebody's going to pay the doctor a lot of money to try and save your life because you don't know how to do it. The doctor does, he can do it, but you can't, you don't know what's going on, yes. But Jordan Maxwell, you know, your vision of the reality is very dark, you know. It's not very easy to accept uh, in the moment, I mean. It, it demands a reflection uh, in ourselves. Uh, <laughs> where do you find yes. the hope do you believe in a transcendent God? Uh, uh, what will happen in the future? Well, you see, uh, because there's so much, because there is so much um, propaganda uh, around the world in religion. Religions tell everybody, all their religions tell everyone uh, basically that everything's going to be fine, that the Lord loves you, and that when you die, you go to heaven with the Lord, and you will see your family in heaven, and uh, and everything's ultimately, ultimately, at the end of the day, everything's going to be fine, and you will see, you'll be with the Lord in heaven, and uh, and so everyone seems to be feeling better knowing that. In point of fact, that's not true at all. That's not true at all. 
It never has been true. But if you understand politics, and if you understand politics and mesmerism to manipulate the human mind, which we call mind control, and if you begin to understand that today religions throughout the world are very, very important. Why? Because they tell their people what they want to hear. They do not tell them the kind of thing Jordan Maxwell will tell you, which is the real truth. Because <laughs> I know what it is, and I've been there, and I can tell you exactly what's going on. But the religions of this world, like the governments of this world, will tell you what you want to hear. You want to know that everything's going to be okay, <clears throat> and that if, you, if and when your, your, your family passes away, and when you die, everything will be fine because you will go to heaven and you will be with the Lord and you will have wonderful thoughts, which are not true at all. It's a business and it's a supply and demand. <clears throat> so when you look at the real truth about theology and religion and God, that is one incredible story. When you go back and for the first time, actually look at the history of world religions. They are all basically the same. They're telling the people of their religion what those people want to hear. And this is why they're so successful, because the churches make tons of money. Anytime you go into a big, a big town, a large big city today, you will see the two most impressive buildings in, in the big cities are banks and churches. Banks and churches. <clears throat> and so when you look at the history of religion, look at the Jewish history, look at the Christian history, the Islamic history, uh, and if you are intellectually honest, and there's a very important point, most people are not intellectually honest. But if you happen to be intellectually honest and don't mind looking at the truth, even though it might offend you or even though it might make you feel foolish to find out the real truth, but if you're intellectually aware of what's going on and you face the truth, you will find that all of the three major religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, all go back to a main one religion. They all go back to one place. All three religions come from Judaism, and India is the, is the cradle for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All three come from India, but most people don't know that. Why? Well, because it's not important. It doesn't mean anything. It's not important. They don't care. Why is that important? They don't care. They, and, all, and in their minds, they know that they have the real truth and that they love the Lord Jesus and they love their God, Yahweh or Allah or whoever it is. They love their God and they'll be all right and they hate everybody else and everybody else is wrong and they're right. And so that's the way the world, the world continues to go that way every day. More and more people believe things which are not true. And then they get in arguments with other people that believe something else. And then before you know it, there's a war or bloodshed or violence or, or racism. and what I call it. It's the same old thing. This, this, it never changes. The same problems that the human race had, say, seven to 10,000 years ago, are the same problems we're still having today. The different wars against different religions and different political groups and, 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 and the warmongers against other nations and there's armies against armies. And, you know, this stuff never stops. It's always the same because the human race is just not prepared to look at things in a realistic, scientific, and historical way and prove what is going on in the world today, how we live and how we think. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to wake people up. 
Jordan Maxwell, I never heard you to speak about the future of AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, what, what can you say about the that? future of when you said the, AI. the future of what of of AI? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, artificial intelligence, <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Well, my first thought is always when it, when we talk about uh, uh, artificial intelligence is that in America, we like to say in America that we have computers that can think for themselves. And which I say, well, thank God, at least somebody can think for themselves <laughs> because the people don't think for themselves. So at least we got a computer that can think for itself. I think if the human race were ever to think for itself, it would be frightened to death at what they would see. But me, I saw it a long time ago. And so uh, artificial intelligence is going to be a, a most unbelievable curse on the earth that you have no idea in the world how bad it's going to be. You cannot imagine how serious and how bad artificial intelligence is going to make the world you live in. Because very soon there's going to be no need for you at work. There's going to be no need for you to go to work. Uh, to earn a living, uh, there's going to be no need for you to read or study anything. Uh, there's not going to be, really not going to be any real need for you. Period. Much less uh, what you learn or what you can do. Uh, you don't need to have you. We have computers that can do much quicker work than you can, and uh, that's why the auto companies have computers to paint the cars and build the cars themselves. Uh, they don't need people. Why, why have people? They're just of trouble. Instead of paying people, don't pay them nothing. Computers. And so, therefore, people are now out of work. You can't, fight, you can't feed your family uh, because, you know, you're not, smart, you're not as smart as a computer. But very soon, there's going to come a time, very soon, and this is why I incidentally suggested to you that, that you should have my, my friend... Uh, Jeffrey Matt on because he's a real expert on AI, artificial intelligence and that kind of thing. He's got some really interesting f stuff to tell you about artificial intelligence. But the bottom line on that subject is that artificial intelligence will ultimately be, I believe, in a couple of hundred years, maybe a hundred years from now, the human race as we know humanity will no longer exist. We're no longer going to exist by having your mother and father and your children and your grandparents and your family and all of that. That's going to be all gone. And so if you're thinking in terms of being like a family unit and caring about your mother and your grandmother and your friends and your family, forget that. With artificial intelligence, within the next hundred years, there's not going to be any humanity left. Everybody's going to have a, 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 a computer code in their on their arms or on their legs or somewhere, their wrist, and you don't have to tell the government anything. They'll know everything about you, where you go, where you eat, what you read, and, uh, and, and the computers will arrest you. They will send you bills, they will, and you can't talk to the computers. The computers will merely talk to you and tell you what you're going to do, and you will do it. And, uh, and so you will find out that you, uh, as a living human being, have been caught up in a world which is a, a horrible, tragic prison, prison like, uh, like uh, Auschwitz and Dukenhau and all of those, uh, those concentration camps in Germany, that's what the whole world is going to be like very soon. No more work, no more families, no more none of that, because the people who run this planet see the normal human beings today as a bunch of cattle. Who needs them? They're, you know, they're, you know, they're just a big problem. You've got to feed them and you've got to clothe them. And you got to make sure they got water to drink and food to eat. And you got to, uh, and, and they're going to get hurt and they got to go to the hospital. And they need a doctor. And all of that is just r ridiculous. All you need to do is just get rid of the human race. 
and just put in computers that can think for themselves, that can build your cars, build everything for you. And the, the, the best of the best of humans will be used to do the labor, you know, grow the food and, and patch up the streets and all that. But there's not going to be any more world of freedom and liberty and justice and intelligence and wisdom and the great concept of, of, a, of a world of wisdom and knowledge and peace and freedom. That's all gone. That's all gone. The whole human race is gone. And, but right now, as long as everybody has beer in their belly and they got a hamburger and they got plenty of beer to drink and they got their, their entertainments and television and whatever else is, they're occupied with, their drugs and sex, drugs and rock and roll and whatever, their music, as long as the people are satisfied, they got food to eat and beer to drink and they got their baseball games and, and then they don't, they don't care about the future. They don't know anything about it. They don't see it coming and they don't care. But one day, that day comes, it's going to be way too late. It's already way too late right now. But very soon, within the next, say, 35 to 40 years, what is left of the human race, people who are actually human beings and, and good people, they're going to notice that the human family is finished. It's over. Everything's computerized. Your skin is computerized. Your eyes are all computerized. Computers will, will tell you what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, there's no need for you to go to college or go to school because you're not going to do anything anyway. They don't want you around. So, yeah, I, I know that what I do is very um, you know, pessimistic. Yeah, <laughs> but it's only because I it's well, yeah, but it's only because I happen to know the truth. And the real truth is pessimistic. I, I was just going to say, if you don't see what I see, it's because you have not been studying the subject like I have for 65 years. I was giving lectures in Los Angeles back in 1959. That's uh, 56 57 years ago, I was giving lectures in downtown Los Angeles about the crime, uh, corruption in government, how corrupt the government is with money and the corruption of banks with the, with the, uh, with the uh, government behind it, the corruption of religions in the Middle East and the, and the uh, use of religion for the wars to start wars and criminal and criminality and government. I was talking about all of the things which today are now all over the world and what we're now seeing every, everywhere now, the corruption, the moral and spiritual breakdown of human civilization, the rise of crime and corruption, violence, all of that I saw back in 1959 as a 19-year-old boy. I was 19 years old. I already knew what was coming. I already know what's going to happen. I can see it. Why? Because I read history. I know the history of the Roman Empire. I knew it started off as a republic. Later on, it became very uh, fat and, and stupid and ugly and, and got into wars and violence and, and, and revolutions and then sex and drugs and rock and roll. And, and with the coming of the drugs came, uh, you know, the the came in. Rome and they were called muggy ears and the vandals. Today we still use those terms, muggers and vandals. No, not vandals, vandals. It was a group of, uh, it was a particular group of people in the Roman Empire that were called the vandals. Today we say vandals. No, it's not exactly vandals, it's vandals. And, uh, but I've seen history, I read it. I know what came into the Grecian Empire. I know what happened to Greece. I know what happened to Rome. I've read all about what happened to Babylonia and Sumeria and the Phoenician Canaanite empires and the Egyptian empires and all of the ancient empires of the world. I know how the world works. I've been studying it for 56 years. And I can tell you that what I see myself at this moment in the world in which I'm living, we humans today, Canada and America and the world waiting for a complete and total collapse of human society. 
And what will come from that will be artificial intelligence and the control over the whole human race. It's going to be a horrible future for the human family. The only bright side that I can see for me is that I'm 77 years old and I'm not going to be here much longer. So I'm not going to see what I'm talking about. But if you stay healthy, you're going to see the world is changing right now. You have no idea in the world how big a change is going to be real soon. Why? Because you're not spiritually awake. You're not spiritually aware of anything. Uh, if you are totally physical in this world and you live in the physical world, you have no idea about the spirit world that we live in. History of the human family. I mean, we've, you have no idea what the human family, what, what life has been like on this earth. For millions and millions of years, we've had highly intelligent uh, civilizations on this earth. Most people don't know that. They think of ancient history as the Egyptians, uh, uh, the Babylonians, or the, you know, they were 5,000 years ago, 5,500 years ago. No, there were highly, extraordinarily intelligent, powerful, and brilliant people living on this earth hundreds of millions of years ago. We know that for a fact, hundreds of millions of years ago. But unfortunately, most people, it's not important because they don't understand. They don't believe it. They've never done any research to find out, so therefore, if they don't care about it and they don't look for it and they don't try and understand it, then they, they think it's all a bunch of you know, malarkey. But we know that there's been highly intelligent civilizations, not just the Mayas and the Incas and the Toltec peoples and, and the ancient peoples of South America and, and, the, and the Mediterranean area. Uh, highly intelligent civilizations go back hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago, and most people are just too stupid to know that. But we're going to find out real soon that we have lost the world. We humans have lost the world. We've lost our way. We've lost our lives. We've lost our freedom. Uh, we've lost our spirituality. Uh, the only thing left to lose now is just your mind. Most people are losing today. I know what's going on. I've been waiting and talking about this for some 56 years. Did you have a question? John Maxwell, many years ago, you went uh, to the Area 51. Is that true? Yeah. What I've been have you to... seen there? I have been to what you are referring to as Area 51. I haven't been in 51 area base. And it's extremely, extremely secure. You can't even get near Area 51. It's extremely secure. It's supposedly as an Air Force base, and that whole area in, in, uh, in uh, Nevada is referred to as the Nellis, in E L L I S, Nellis Air Force Range, the Nellis Air Force uh, base. But that is a huge base. It goes from southern uh, uh, Nevada all the way up to northern Nevada, 1,000 miles, uh, 800 miles in square. It's, it's just an enormous uh, uh, test range for jets and all kinds of new technology to be tested out there. That's where they tested the uh, atomic bomb, uh, you know, many, many years ago. It was out at the Nellis test range. Talk about Area 51. Everybody who's ever been there knows that there's a little Mickey Mouse town, just a little tiny little town that's actually only a, a restaurant and a motel and a little grocery store. And that's it. There's a big, uh, a nice restaurant, a uh, couple of the motel rooms, and a mother, mom and pop grocery store, and that's about it. And so 
There are no lights. You're out in the middle of the desert, way out, uh, uh, well over two and a half hours of driving on the desert, uh, you know, freeway speeds, for two and a half hours north of Las Vegas. So when you get into Las Vegas, you keep going north for two and a half hours, and you will come upon a little town called Rachel. And right behind Rachel, And that's Area 51. And so if you want to go out to see Area 51, you've got to go to Rachel. You have to call and make sure they will have a motel room for you so that you don't get out there and they have no place to sleep. So uh, you call the, the little alien, uh, Rachel, and the little alien is the restaurant. And they have the, uh, you know, they'll, they'll get you a room to stay if you're going to go out there to see Area 51. I've been out there many, many, many times. I spoke at uh, conferences out there at, at uh, Rachel. Um, <clears throat> we've seen UFOs right in front of you, right in your face. Uh, seven U UFOs came down and oh, right over us. There was no doubt they were not of this world. What we saw and what we experienced, myself and two other adults with me, my friend from La and my lady friend from Hawaii. There were three of us, and we saw UFOs right over us, playing with us. They stood right over the top of us and followed us around, and we could watch them following us around. And then when we went back to the motel that night, uh, my friend, there were two bedrooms, and so my friend Paul from San Diego, who's a, who's a book dealer, he took the one bedroom, and in the middle of the night, an alien, not of this world, a little alien came in his bedroom. And of course, it scared him to death. It scared out all of us. But, uh, but this was a little uh, alien that came into his bedroom, and he saw it. And, uh, and it communicated with him. So while people may think that the most important Importance today going on in the world today is the government and the war with North Korea and and uh, and the president of the U.S. doing this, the president doing that. No, the really important stuff is going on. You have no idea the world what's going on. There are life forms here that are not from the earth, and they are here, and they are superior to us. They are far superior to humans. We cannot even begin to know how incredibly wise and perceptive they are. You can't see them, but they can see you. We're talking about angels, spirits, devils, demons, uh, poltergeists, jinns. There are all kinds of words to explain the spirit world. But the point is, there is a spirit world. There are spirits all around us. You can't see them. And, but they can affect you. They can affect you very, very good or very bad. So they are superior to you. That You don't see them, but they see you. And they've come here from somewhere else. So that shows they're superior to you in intelligence. Because you can't go out there to where they came from. You can't go out there to see them. But they can come here to see us. Why? Because they're smarter than you are. <laughs> they're smarter than your government. They're smarter than your scientists. They're far, far more wiser and smarter than all the humans put together because they've been around for millions of years growing and, and, and learning and understanding the universe so well that now they can come here. They come here all the time. And, but most people don't know that. We're too ignorant and ill-informed to know that there are extraterrestrial life forms on this earth now that are not from here, and they are guiding our destiny and our politics. They are controlling our political leaders. Uh, it's an extraordinary story of how much the world of mankind does not know. So that's what I try and do is wake people up. Jordan Maxwell... You have known uh, the, the writer Zekaria Sitchin. 
Oh, yes. Zacharias. Zacharias Sitchin. Yeah. Zacharias uh, Sitchin Zacharias... Is, uh, is today, after his death, unfortunately, a superstar yeah. in the field of ancient astronaut theory. What, what can you say about that man? Zacharias Sitchin, a very famous author who was an expert uh, on the Sumerian culture, the, one of the most ancient Sumerian cultures in the Middle East. Uh, Zacharias Sitchin was like an expert on that subject. He was a teacher. and uh, But he's written many, many books. I think about 13 or 14 books about the ancient Sumerians and the ancient Phoenicians and the ancient Canaanites and all of those people in the Middle East that were around five or 6,000 years ago. And he's a world-class expert. <clears throat> well, he passed away a few years back, and he's gone. But at the time he was doing his work in writing, I was, I was a, a business partner with him. I helped uh, get his books published. I helped get him on television and radio. Uh, I was doing what I could to promote him and help him in his work because I knew the of his what he was saying and what he was talking about because I love history. I love the history, and the more ancient the history, the more I love it. And so I was doing whatever I could to help him. Um, and I learned a lot from him. And Zechariah Sitchin told the world a lot of interesting stuff about the ancient and prehistoric world of five and six and 7,000 years ago. What the people in the um, Babylonia, Sumeria, uh, that whole uh, Palestinian area, the peoples of that Palestinian area, um, <clears throat> what they were really like 6,000 years ago, and the, um, the extraterrestrial presence in the ancient, in the ancient world. All of that, uh, you know, I've talked with him for hours on that because I was in business with him. A lot that uh, I tell you about him, but you'll just get his books and read, and you'll see how fascinating uh, you know he was with his books. But there's a lot he didn't tell people. There's a lot he knew, but he didn't tell anybody. And uh, so, but that's the same way it is with any brilliant authors and lecturers and teachers. They can't tell you everything. But his work is very, very important to understanding the history of the human race. Zachariah Sitchin, spell S-I-T-C-H-I-N, Sitchin. What tips? <laughs> okay. What tips can you give for independent and young conspiracy and UFOs researchers? Because you know your work uh, is monumental and controversial also but it inspired a, a new generation of young researchers. What, what advice can I give the young people, the people today who are waking up to these subjects? Yes. I would suggest that, first of all, you need to be intellectually honest. Don't look at something and, and, and somebody tells you, oh, no, that's not... Please be really honest and look at whatever it is and see it for what it's worth because today people today let me let me say it this way uh, scientists today are as a religion science is a religion it's not very scientific especially in America uh, I would say a good 95 to 96 percent of what we call science in America today is a religion it has nothing to do with science at all because science has to do with intellectually looking at something and examining it scientifically and and look at it in truth what it is and 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 uh, there's nothing to discuss and debate about it it's scientific well that's not what's happening in america scientists are being paid money to tell you what the government wants wants to know. Government wants to keep you ignorant, ill-informed, and stupid, 
so that you will not know what's going on. So they will pay scientists to keep your mouth shut, look the other way, and when you are asked about something, just make, make sure it's all it's the nonsense and don't tell people anything. And so just, just refer to the books and to the holy men. We have holy men and, and, and saints in the scientific society. We have certain doctors who are like saints, and they talk to God, and they know everything there is to know about everything. And, and yet the, the people of the country have no idea about anything. And if it wasn't for the, uh, the web and the alternative media uh, giving the real stories that's really going on from the people, not from the professional. The professional scientists are not just the And the religious leaders, they're nothing. They're, they're, they're even worse than scientists. So they, as I said to you before, scientists like government, like uh, religion, like any human institution that has power over you, scientists will tell you what you want to hear, not what the real truth is. They will tell you what they, what you want to hear. You want to hear that everything's going to be fine, and when you die, you'll go to heaven with the Lord, and you'll see your family and all of that, when in point of fact, scientifically, there's a big question here as to who you really are and where you've really come from and how did you really get here. And when you talk about God, God is dog spelled backwards. So if you want to talk about theology, we could do that for eight to ten hours. And I could tell you stories about religion and year before, about where churches come from, where religions have come from, how they developed, uh, where the ideas have come from. And then you find out how much you didn't know, that you thought you knew about God and you thought you knew about religion. You're going to find out you really don't know anything because it, the whole story, the real story of theology and religion is so different. Do you realize that Christianity today would not be recognized by the people 2,000 years ago when Christianity supposedly was, was being founded 2,000 years ago? early Christianity, early Christianity was totally, totally different than Christianity today. Christianity today has nothing whatsoever to do with ancient Christianity, where it began 2,000 years ago. Different religion today. None of it has anything to do with first century original Christianity. So therefore, I don't get excited over hearing all the discussion, the debates about religion and what the real truth is and what the Bible says and what it didn't say and why does it say this and why does it say that. All of that because the entire story of Christianity has no bearing on what the original story was at all. So if you want to discuss religion, that's fine. If you want to discuss Judaism and Christianity, that's fine. Go back to the original religion. Go back to Judaism when it originally, and look at the, what they believed, what the ancient Jewish people, the old Jewish people actually, in fact, believed. Not what you think about today but what they actually taught and said, go back to Christianity and you'll find that they, Christianity and Christians 2,000 years ago was a totally different religion completely. And that's why today there's so much confusion and violence, frustration, anger, greed, uh, all kinds of misunderstandings among people, religions, not to the point that we would go to war over religions, never realizing that the, 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 the religions that we practice today have nothing to do at all with the original religion that we supposedly are following. Nothing at all. It's an extraordinary story. I mean, I could go on for hours just on that one subject because it's one of my favorite subjects and I've talked for hours on it. I, I must... It's very important for you to know. I must say, Jordan Maxwell, uh, I read a lot about theology, religion. Again? Uh, 
I, I said, uh, I read a lot about religion, theology, history. You know, th this is the influence you, you, you have on me, on my own work, uh, yeah. <laughs> studying theology, because yeah. yes, you, you are right. This is the most passionate subject in the world. I think so. I think it is the most wonderful, uh, phenomenal, fascinating subject. It's religion, where it really comes from and what it really means. And then when you find out that the religions that we think of today, Christianity, as I said, and Islam, have nothing to do with the original religion at all. Today, all three of those religions come from India. All three. Christianity is from India. Um, Judaism is from India. As a matter of fact, you know, there's a, uh, if you've got a moment, all three major religions will tell you that their father, the beginning of their religion was Abraham. They're called Abrahamic religions. Christianity uh, highly venerates Abraham in the Bible. The Jewish people highly, uh, highly, highly, uh, uh, you know, represent Abraham. Abraham was a was their father, Father Abraham. He was the leader of their of the people, and in, even in Islam, they highly uh, uh, praise Abraham because they are Abrahamic religion. Supposedly, Abraham birth to or Abraham gave birth to the Christianity, or to Judaism. In actual point of fact, Abraham never existed. There is no Abraham. There never was an Abraham. Just a story. That's why the Bible is called the greatest story ever told. It's just a story. Nobody says the greatest collection of historical facts. It's a story. Abraham never existed. There was no Abraham. So if there was no Abraham, then the Abrahamic religions of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are frauds. There was no Abraham. So when they tell you that their father was Abraham, well, that tells me, well, then you're all wrong because there was no Abraham. If you go back into India, uh, you will find that, they, uh, that they, when you talk about the Jew God, the God, the Jews were God's God's chosen people, and their their father was Abraham. Well, go back into the history of Hinduism, and you will find that in the Hindu religion, there was a priesthood who considered themselves to be God's chosen people. They were the people who could talk to God, and so they call themselves God's chosen, and they were called. The, uh, they were called Brahmins, Brahmin priests. And Brahma was the chief god of the Brahmin priesthood. And so if you go back into the Bible, in the book of Genesis, into the Bible, it will tell you that Abraham, that's not his name. His name was Abram, A-B-R-A-M, Abram. Later on, his name was changed to Abraham. But it was Abram. ancient world, A-B was Ab. Ab was father. A-B is father. And Ram, R-A-M. So the father Ram was Abram. And there are many Jewish guys today named Abram. Abram. Not Abraham. Abram. Abram. A-B-R-A-M. Father Ram. And in, 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 uh, in the Egyptians, there were Ram gods. The Ram always represented the constellation of Aries, the Ram. This is why the, jo the Jews blow the ram's horn for Aries, the constellation of Aries the ram. And what was before Aries the ram in the constellation was Taurus, the bull, the golden calf, golden for the sun, and the calf is, is Taurus, the bull. So when you understand that Judaism, Christianity, Islam, all of it goes back to Hinduism, it's all astrology, it all, all astrology, symbols in the sky, um, 
it's an incredible story, and I love to talk about it because I've studied it for 56 years. Basically, I can tell you that the human race today has no idea in the world what the real, legitimate, de jure, provable truth is about God and religion. It has nothing to do with anybody you see on TV or any preachers or television preachers or none of that nonsense that goes on. Yes. Uh, Jordan Maxwell, the, the question I forgot, uh, it, it, it came back. And it will be the real last question of the show tonight. Uh, <laughs> like I said earlier, your work is fascinating, but also controversial, you know? Have you ever received threats in, in Always your Always controversial. Past? Say it again. Have you ever received threats in the past? For your work oh you have no idea how many threats I get I have had so many threats but all, some of them were very very serious uh, I get a lot of people trying to trash my name calling me names uh, attributing to me uh, criminal activity they're calling me a criminal they're calling me stupid um, there's all kinds of religious people, especially born-again Christians, especially born-again Christians, who will call me names. They make up lies about me. They, they, tell, they go out on the web and put out fraudulent lies. Uh, you know, even though the, one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments, says not to bear a bear false witness against your neighbor well the christians don't care about that they they're in tight with god so they don't need to worry about no ten commandments so they could go out and talk about me and call me names and pass around lies and stories that they make up about me they say that i work for the government or i'm a i, I work for the devil i'm a satanist uh, i work for the stuff. cia <laughs> they say that i i, I, I they, they, yeah, yeah. They say I, I work for the devil. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a devil worshiper. I'm also working for the CIA or the yeah. FBI or or the government. I'm a, I'm a devil worshiper. I'm Satanist. Uh, all kinds of stories about me. Nobody nobody knows my personal life. Nobody comes to see how I live and where I live. Um, but they can call me names in public. The Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments says not to bear false witness against your neighbor. But Christians don't seem to worry about that. They, they bear false witness against me all the time. They're always lying and calling me and threatening me. And it's because they cannot deal with what I'm talking about. They no. cannot handle. And the reason why is because they have, they're beginning to suspect that they have been fooled. And his, this is what bothers the people that are bothered by me. They know that in their gut that I'm telling them the truth, and they know that this is the truth. But they know that that makes them look foolish because they have believed something all their life. And now they're just now beginning to find out that what they thought was the truth was not the truth, and they've been fooled into believing. And that's why they now have to attack me personally and call me and attack me name <clears throat> and, and attack me they're not attacking my what i'm teaching and what i'm saying about yeah. religion and history they're attacking me personally it's called an ad hominem attack on me and because i am challenging their life their lies and deception and so somewhere along the line the world is going to wake up and find out that the entire world of mankind has been misled into believing all kinds of religious beliefs, none of it was true. But there is a dark side to religion. There is a real truth out there. But the religions of this world don't have it. And the few that do know it, they're not telling you. They're not telling you what they really know to be true. So if you want to talk about God, you want to talk about theology and religion, talk to me. You on theology alone.
just on religion. And I will tell you many things you have never heard about religion. You know, Jordan, all you just said about evangelical Christians in America reminds me why I hate them so much. In, <laughs> in, in all the Christian faith, I am myself Christian, Catholic. I, I, I have been bat baptized Catholic, but I'm not a Catholic. I'm a Christian, but, yeah. but I hate evangelical Christians in America. They are a pest for the intelligence. Yeah, I know, but you see, I understand that, and I understand them. I know why they are the way they are. It's because they are being challenged by knowledge, yeah. by wisdom and knowledge. But the scripture said that, that there will come a day when what has been done in the dark will come to light. Yeah. And the deception is, is little by little, the deception is starting to come out now and people are beginning to see they've been lied to by governments. They've been lied to by the banks. They've been lied to by commerce and the military. And the educational system has lied to you and told you stuff in your educational system in college and universities that are not true. Your scientists are, are, are on the payroll to tell you what the government wants you to know. Your religionists are only seeking to make money and control the people. Uh, the, uh, when you're born, the, 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 priest, the priest is there when you're born. The priest is there when you get married. And the priest is there when you die. So they're controlling your whole life. is controlled by the church. Well, who controls the church? Well, that's none of your business. And, well, where does the money come from? And how, who's printing our money? That's none of your business. You just drink and go to the ball game and do whatever it is you call yourself doing. And don't butt your nose into the business of the masters who run this planet. The guys who run this planet, they already know what the real story is. And they know you don't know. And as long as you're ignorant and don't know and are afraid, you know, Plato said it. Plato said, I understand why a child is afraid of the dark. What I don't understand is why grown men are afraid of the light. People are scared to death to hear the truth. <laughs> a child is afraid of the dark. Well, I can understand that. But grown men are frightened to death to hear the real truth. They hear light. Something that's lighted up with truth. You know, like the scripture says, that you're supposed to be a light to the world. A light means you're shining on, on knowledge and wisdom and teaching people. Hey, that's to do that. Why? Because people don't want to hear the truth. They're not interested. They don't want to hear the truth. But there's already, there are a, a few people who do. There's always going to be a few people who really know that what's going on in the world is not right and there's something wrong and we're all heading in the wrong direction and a lot of a lot of good people know that but they don't know what the real truth is so i'm here to try and help people to understand where it is we've come from where it is we are now and where we're heading and believe me it's not a very pretty picture why because we've been looking the other way for thousands of years, and now it's time to look at the real truth. Jordan Maxwell, uh, you know, last year I have met you for the first time on my show, and my dreams come true. And since that, you, you accorded to me eight hours of your time. Uh, it was... <laughs> A privilege to speak with you uh, maybe we can talk about other subject but uh, another time but it was a pleasure to have the chance to speak with you like I said earlier you you inspired my own work more than you can imagine and my respect for you is forever Jordan well I appreciate that and it's very kind of you and I thank you for that I don't see myself as very important because I know I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. I'm just an ordinary man, but as far back as my 19-year-old, I'm 76 today, but as far back as when I was 19 years old, I, I was 
the world that I live in. There was too much crime, too many lies, too much deception, and I wanted to know the real truth. So I spent my whole life pursuing wisdom and knowledge and understanding and seeking after all the dark knowledge that people are not being told. So that's what I do. Uh, I, I, I appreciate your, your comments. But I don't consider myself to be very important. I just do what I feel uh, the Great Spirit wants people to wake up and to see the real truth of what's really going on. And I could do that for you. I could tell you all kinds of things and answer questions that, on things you've never even thought of before. So, again, I want to thank you for having me on the show many times. And if you wanted to do a new series of just on theology. If that's what you want to do, then we could do that too. I'm always happy to be on the show with you. So take care of yourself, Jordan Maxwell, and I don't say you adios, but uh, uh, next time. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. We could talk anytime you wish. So you let me know and I'll be happy to come on. And I want to thank you again for letting me come on and talk. Thank you.